Hello friends, this video on changes around us part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's look at another example where you are mixing two different substances. Let's say if you uh, take a teaspoon of salt and put it into water and then you mix them nicely. So what do you get? You get a salt solution. So was there a change? Of course, earlier we just had plain water. And now we have a salt solution. So obviously this is a change. But do you think it is a reversible change? Okay, so earlier, earlier what did we have? We had plain water. And now what do we have? We have salt water. So how did we get salt water from plain water? By dissolving salt into it. Now is there any way by which we can convert the salt water back into water? Yes, by evaporation that is by heating. So if you heat the salt water what happens? The liquid water in it gets evaporated, it gets converted into water vapor. So all the water gets lost as water vapor and all that is left in the pan is the salt. So that means you are able to separate salt and water. So that means you are able to get back the salt and that is why this change is a reversible change. Let's look at another process that is rusting of iron. Do you know what is rusting? Have you ever see, look, seen any um, old articles, old things which are made up of iron? And when, like, if, if you keep them outside so that they are exposed to rain, they are exposed to air, after a couple of years, you see these kind of red, kind of uh, powdery things get deposited over the iron articles. So they look really bad. So you look at it, you see these kind of uh, reddish colored things which gets deposited over these articles. So these, this is nothing but, this is called rust. And this process is called rusting. So in rusting what happens is, now iron has a property that it tends to react with moist air. That is it tends to react with water and air to form an oxide of iron which is called rust. So rust is nothing but it is an oxide of iron. So this rust formation takes place in presence of moist air. So that is also changed because earlier it was like a... a shiny iron object and now it is like an iron object with a layer of rust. So this process is an irreversible process. Do you know why? Because in this process a lot of chemical changes take place, chemical reactions take place because of which a new substance is formed that is the oxide of iron and we cannot get back normal iron from oxide of iron. So that ways it is an irreversible process. Egg to omelette, as I was telling. So when you fry an egg on the pan, it becomes an omelette. So what happens when you fry it? You, we actually expose it to a very high temperature. We heat it. So when we heat it, a lot of uh, change and takes place in its chemical composition during frying. Now since the chemical composition gets changed, so do you think that you can get back the egg from the omelette? You really can't. So that is why it is an example of irreversible change. Bursting of crackers. Festival time arrives and you get busy with bursting crackers even though they cause a lot of pollution so we should always try to avoid them. But when you burst crackers what happens? There is a change. So as soon as you uh, give some fire to the cracker it bursts making a loud noise and some beautiful colors. But after, so what happened basically? So there was a change. Earlier this color, sound, nothing was there. But suddenly all of these came. So this is a change. But do you think it is reversible or irreversible? Definitely irreversible because once it bursts, you cannot get back the cracker again. So it's like gone forever. So this is again and here also during the burst, during when the burst happens, a lot of change in chemical composition takes place. A lot of energy is released during the process. Now since chemical, compo chemical reactions take place, a new substances are also formed during the process. So this is an irreversible change. Think of the dough. Now I'm sure all of you know what is dough. We, we eat some, a very common food in India at least is uh, roti or chapati. So how do we prepare them? We prepare them from this type of a dough. So when you look at the shape of the dough, you see that you can give by applying force, you can bring about change in the shape of the dough. 
Now, so this type of change in shapes which you bring about in the dough by applying pressure, that is nothing but reversible change. So when you talk about the shape of the dough, so that is an, a reversible change. Now again, how do you prepare chapati? You take the dough, you using a roller, you roll it into uh, circular rotis and, that's how, and then you bake it. So as far as rolling the chapatis is concerned, that is also a reversible change. So you can actually uh, roll a chapati and then if, if you do not like the shape of it, what you can do is you can again uh, make bring it back to the same condition that is you can bring it back in the shape of the dough and you can again roll it so basically it is a reversible change but once you have baked it in the tawa so let's say that you prepared the dough then you rolled it into circular chapatis and then you baked it so once the rotis are baked in tawa then what happens now as soon as you put it on the tawa you are exposing it to high temperatures and the chemical composition changes when heating is done and once the roti is baked, you cannot get back the dough from that baked roti. So once baked, so basically baking of or cooking of the roti or chapati, that is definitely an irreversible change. So basically you see in the same thing also, different steps involve different types of changes depending on whether you can reverse them or not. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.